Right, the fight I fought with Roy Jones was supposed to be with Bob Sapp. Oh, really? And Bob Sapp was one of the first guys to explode on the scene that had a lot of athleticism. 375 with abs. Jesus. What are you? What is this new type of human being? He was an enormous superstar in Japan. He's got muscles on muscles. That's gotta be what, like 350? The best heavyweight in the world being manhandled by a monster. What a frightening experience it must be. But you know, even Fedor wouldn't fight Bob Sapp. Yeah. And his prime is like, Smart. get the f out of yeah. here. David and Goliath. It's so exciting to watch the fights where an athlete who is smaller in terms of size and from the first glance has low chances of winning. In the end, gets the upper hand and oftentimes with a huge advantage. Not that long ago, we presented to you the compilation where small fighters beat the giants. And now it's time for the second part. If you want to see the third, let's get 10,000 likes and we will make it happen. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with forwards and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Kirill Sildelnikov against Martin Soltychek. The first fight we're going to talk about today took place in March of 2008. At that moment, two beginner fighters collided in the cage and impressed everybody with their size. The Russian had a record of one win and one loss and never looked small in comparison to his opponents, let alone his rival in the face of a representative from France whose record was 1-0. As soon as the fight took off, Soltychek rushed at the Russian hoping to slay him with a heavy strike. Sidelnikov managed to dodge in time and withstand the attack. Then he began to actively move in the ring to not freeze in one place. Martin continued his onslaught and swung with the dynamite in his hands. Kirill avoided another dangerous attack. Compared to the Frenchman, the Russian fighter looked like a child, but that actually helped him to invade the flying strikes. A minute later, it became clear that Soltychek got fatigued. He began to move slowly while Sidelnikov was only turning up. Every missed strike was making the Frenchman lose the last bits of his energy that barely kept him on his feet. And in the middle of the round, Kirill capitalized on that. He threw a huge overhand that landed right on the chin of his enormous opponent. And that was it. Deep knockout. Yeah. Not at all. Oh, big right hand and that's it. Is... Choi Hong Man against Zhou Ji Peng. The first fight we're going to talk about today featured the worldwide known Korean monster. In the first part of the compilation, we already mentioned one of the giant's fights when he faced Fedor Emelianenko back in those old and ruthless times in Pride. And this time, we chose the fight that took place on November the 6th of 2016. At one of the kickboxing tournaments of the local Asian promotion, Choi Hong Man went up against the young Chinese, Zhou Ji Peng. The colossal difference in size and height between the athletes could be seen with a naked eye. And despite a clear decline, the 36-year-old Korean monster was still terrifying people with his appearance alone. Choi Hongman didn't know how to approach his opponent for quite some time, as well as the Chinese. After a one-minute walk, Zhou Ju Peng decided to attack first and began to throw low kicks. The Korean was not in a hurry to get into action and just stalked his faster opponent. The referee even had to hint to the fighters at the fact that they need to start doing something. And it actually helped a bit. Ji Peng became more persistent with low kicks while Choi made a couple of attempts to catch and attack his opponent. However, that was it and the first round came to an end. The next three minutes kept on going in the same manner. A big and clumsy Korean monster desperately tried to catch his opponent with a crazy strike while the Chinese representative surgically battered his legs and masterfully avoided any possibility of convergence. The third and final round was a bit more paced up. Choi Hong Man began to chase the agile Chinese who did his best to dodge the flying strikes. The most part of the round, though it was at a higher pace, was not significantly different to the first two, except for one clinch attempt in the second half and one connection from Ji Peng. Not with a low kick, but a clean uppercut to the Korean's chin. 
In the end, the Chinese earned a deserved win via unanimous decision. Number 2. Daniel Cormier against Antonio Silva A huge Brazilian fighter who was 6 foot 3 tall was waiting for Cormier in the heavyweight Grand Prix semi-finals of Strikeforce. Enormous hands, legs and terrifying appearance of Bigfoot are mostly due to acromegaly, an illness that caused a pathological growth of body parts. However, health issues did not stop Silva from smashing his opponent one after another. Shortly prior to the fight with DC, Antonio beat the legendary Fedor Emelianenko and was looking to extend his winning streak. As for Cormier, he got into the semi-finals thanks to a replacement of an injured Alistair Overeem. The American started his fight with Silva slowly. He immediately entered a waiting mode and began to utilize low kicks. Bigfoot tried to get to his opponent with an explosive combination but only pressed him to defense and was quick to separate. Daniel was a threat because of his wrestling, while the Brazilian was betting on the striking technique. However, he ultimately couldn't impress Cormier with his skills that night. When DC went forward, he threw a sudden and heavy right hook, which instantly knocked his opponent down. Antonio Silva didn't even know what happened. It seemed like the American was close to finishing the job, but Daniel thought differently and gave Bigfoot an opportunity to get up. The Brazilian decided to catch up and went for the action. Cormier dodged every strike with no issues, and when he figured that it's time, a vicious uppercut out of nowhere literally smashed Silva's chin and in combination with a subsequent follow-up, earned the American a direct ticket to Grand Prix Finale. Number 3. Demetrius Johnson against Adriano Morales 2 After leaving the world's best league, where the Mighty Mouse was one of the most dominant champions in history, he moved to 1FC in March of 2019. Since then, he has earned a number of convincing wins, but it also couldn't go without losses. On April the 7th of 2021, he shared the cage with the Brazilian representative, Adriano Morales, for the first time. And in that fight, Demetrius Johnson suffered the first knockout loss in his entire professional career. After that, the Mighty Mouse returned in the winning column. And there it was, on August the 27th, at the very end of the summer. He shared the octagon with the Brazilian fighter once again. In the second fight with Adriano Morales, the 36-year-old Demetrius Johnson looked incredible. He strictly followed his coach's advice and stuck to the game plan, which eventually led to a desired result. Closer to the end of the fourth round, Mighty Mouse stunned the Brazilian and then finished him with a flying knee. He won the rematch and snatched the 1FC Flyweight Championship. Oh, big right, DJ! It's done! Big knee! And all of that with Morales being 5 inches taller and around 22 pounds heavier than Demetrius Johnson. And on May the 5th of 2023, there's going to be the end of the trilogy to identify the best champion. And considering how the first two fights went down, the third one will not disappoint. Number 4. Anne Wolf against Vonda Ward The next fight we're going to talk about happened between two female athletes, or more so, in boxing. On May the 8th of 2004, there was a boxing fight that ended with the greatest knockout in the history of female boxing. That's what the title says. Well, let's take a look. At that time, Vonda Ward, who was significantly bigger than her opponent, had a record of 18 wins and no losses, while Anne Wolfe had 16 names on her resume with only one defeat. The clash started immediately with rough action and quick exchanges. Anne often tried to duck with a perpendicular movement, while her opponent was simply exiting the range. Vonda Ward did not look that terrifying and untouchable in this fight, because the Austin tight was not scared of her size and repeatedly went forward. Wolf was gaining confidence with each second and caught her opponent with sharp punches more frequently. In the end, she put on an exclamation mark with one minute left in the first round. Oh, big green hand. One punch. A ferocious and lightning fast overhand from Ann Wolf knocked Vonda out cold. 
No count was needed. Number 5. Mike Tyson against Sammy Schaff In the beginning of December 1985, the vicious and merciless Mike Tyson was having his 14th professional fight in the boxing ring. Despite a rather average size, 5 foot 8 tall and a reach of 71 inches, he was always recognized as a threat for everybody in the heavyweight division with no exceptions. However, at the moment when Sammy Schaff, being 6 foot 3 tall, was supposed to be his next opponent, for some time it seemed like it was going to be a good test for Iron Mike's skills, but the reality was different. 19-year-old Mike went after his opponent like a hungry beast literally right from the start. He chased him around the ring like a prey and pushed the pace with every second. Sammy Schaff simply had no time to react to the Iron One's actions. He often tried to separate and used a side movement only to avoid convergence and not get caught with deadly combinations. Mike absolutely didn't care what his vis-a-vis -vis was doing. He persistently went forward and repeatedly hit his head with different punches. By the middle of the first round, his nose was already bleeding and the Iron One was just taking off. Eventually, another left hand from Mike literally took away any desire from Sammy Schaff to continue fighting. Tyson does not throw wild punches. Big left hook. At that time, this was a 10th consecutive first round knockout win for young Mike. Number 6. Bob Sapp against Aori Gell In July of 2016, the legendary freak fighter and simply a monster in Bob Sapp, who was also mentioned in the first part of our compilation, was up against the Japanese athlete Aori Gell. Their fight took place at Xiaomi Road FC 032 tournament. Despite all of his size, Aori Gell was still inferior to Bob Sapp in terms of weight and height. When the fight started, the American fighter cautiously moved towards his opponent. Sapp decided to initiate some kind of a clinch and was the first to attack. However, that worked as sort of a turn-on button for the Japanese fighter. Aori Gell immediately stepped on the gas and began to barrage his confused opponent with looping strikes. Bob Sapp made a couple of counter-attack attempts, but none of them were successful. The Japanese knocked the American down and vividly finished him via TKO in just 39 seconds. Number 6. Enho against Hakuho At the next spot, we have a clash that is rather uncharacteristic for our channel in the sport called Sumo. However, it perfectly fits this particular video. On February the 9th of 2020, there was the 44th Fuji Tournament, which was labelled as the strangest sumo match in history. The well-known in wide circles, Yokozuna Hakuho was up against Enho, who was many times smaller. The clash started off in a typical manner for this kind of sport. The sumo athletes were searching for ways to win in attempts to collide. A faster Enho managed to evade Hakuho's movement and took the center of the circle. Yokozuna found the difference in size to be quite funny and stuck out his hand, keeping his opponent away and just smiling. Enho just stood and waited for a couple of seconds. When he figured that it might go for too long, he decided to attack. He pushed Yokozuna's hand, pulled him and grabbed his leg. After a little bit of fussing to everybody's surprise, he simply tossed Hakuno. He put Yokozuna in his place, snatched a victory in this rivalry and proved once again that a win in any kind of competition is not always dependent on the human's size. Number 8. Eric Ash against Ed White On December the 4th of 1997, the world witnessed the boxing match featuring Butterbean and White for the heavyweight IBA World Championship. This time round, it was Ash who took on the role of being a significantly smaller athlete compared to his opponent. At first, White was quite successful at keeping his opponent at bay and catching him with heavy shots, while Butterbean repeatedly tried to duck under the attacks and counter from a short distance. Eric Ash impressed many people with his durable chin in this fight because in the beginning, almost all of his opponent's strikes were easily reaching the target. However, Butterbean was not looking to give up on that night and continued to persistently go forward despite the damage. 
the fight gradually went to the second round. It became evident that Ed White started to breathe heavily. His strikes were no longer as sharp and fast as they were in the first round. And Ash, on the contrary, was just turning up. In less than half a minute, he sent his opponent down with a big right hand. The referee counted to eight, but White managed to get up, even though it was tough for him. Butterbean felt the blood and rushed for the finish. Soon, he ended the fight with another right hook that knocked Ed White out of the ring. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Yep. Oof. What a haymaker. Extra spot. Giant Silver against Akabono. At an extra spot, we have a fight between two huge athletes that competed in the same period and oftentimes were significantly bigger than their opponents. However, on that night, they went up against each other. In one corner, there was a fighter called Paolo Cesar Silva, nicknamed Giant, as his height was the record setting 7 foot and 5 inches and on the other, a worldwide known sumo wrestler who was also mentioned in the first part of our compilation. Weighing more than 440 pounds, nicknamed the great champion Akabono. As soon as the fight started, the crowd erupted with excitement. Giant Silver went to attack the great champion. He tried to hit with looping strikes, but Akabono pushed him with all of his weight against the upper rope. The fighters spent some time standing in one position. The Japanese staff even had to hold them and the rope from the other side so it wouldn't tear because of the huge weight. Silva grabbed Akabono's right hand and tried to execute a Kimura. Then, Giant tried to take his opponent to the ground and landed on him while holding his hand. The broadcast team did not spare their vocal cords discussing such a spectacle until eventually Paolo Silva successfully executed his submission. There it is guys, leave your opinion in the comments below. Which of the aforementioned fights did you like the most? And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. And that's it for today. See you soon.